Gymnastics, it is so diverse. It has been practiced for thousands of years with constant change and development around the world. Today, when we practice gymnastics, the aim can be to train the body, but it can be so much more. It can be to have fun, to get fit, to learn fundamentals and new skills, or to compete. Even in the Olympic Games, gymnastics is one of the most popular and most watched sports in the Games itself. And one of those reasons is because the talented gymnasts from around the world, they demonstrate those incredible things with their body, which is really amazing to watch. But what goes on behind the scenes in governing and developing the sport and creating the opportunity for children and other members of society to access the sport? My name is Teko Mokhozi and I'll be hosting this seminar on behalf of the FIG Education Commission. So one of the questions we do ask ourselves in gymnastics development is how to run a national federation and ensuring sustainable development for the long term. In the FIG, we have a mixed part of quite well-established federations which run like a well-oiled machine that have been around for many decades with very good infrastructure and successful gymnastics uh, programs. And others that are not so well-established but are able to soldier on, on their quest to move up the ranks in the international arena. And then there are others that are really struggling to get going. Those in emerging and underdeveloped economies who may have the passion, but are perhaps unable to achieve the results they wish to have. What about new federations starting from the bottom? We have not yet built the knowledge base or the footprint and can they avoid mistakes that could hold them back for a long time? Over the next couple of seminars, we'll be exploring this issue of sports federation management, and we'll engage some national federations in different parts of the world to share their experiences, to give us a glimpse of the challenges and hope to identify some of the solutions too on a practical level. So our focus in today's seminar is on four emerging countries, Fiji in Oceania, Laos in Asia, Rwanda in Africa, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines in Canada. Let's start by listening to what they have to say. Tessa Eastgate, one of the directors of the Gymnastics Federation of Fiji. GFF was established in 2015 and joined FIG in 2016. Fiji now has three paying clubs, five local gymnastics communities, one club run by GFF for sport development, three schools engaged in the sport, two as extracurricular clubs and one as part of the PE curriculum, and two development squads for athletes on competitive pathways. We have approximately 200 members. What are the three barriers or challenges you encountered or are encountering while establishing your federation? First, limited reputation and lack of knowledge about the sport. Gymnastics is still a largely unknown sport in Fiji. Most people only know Olympic WAG or view gymnastics more as a form of dance rather than a sport, so there are still a lot of misconceptions about it. Second, limited resources. Fiji has very little resources, whether human resource, infrastructure, or equipment, to support the establishment of organizations dedicated to gymnastics. Access to resources from abroad is either limited, to expensive, often both. It continues to be very difficult to get experienced administrators or aspiring coaches and athletes to get involved in the sport. And it continues to be very difficult to get resources and experts into the country. Third, 
lack of commitment to long-term development. Development plans for gymnasts are very different from other sports as they are based on levels that require mastering building blocks before attempting any skills. Therefore, some skills can take many years to master. This is something that is still not well understood in Fiji, so persuading stakeholders such as national governing bodies, potential sponsors, grant providers, aspiring athletes, parents of athletes, or aspiring coaches to commit to long-term development plans for competitive athletes can prove to be problematic. On reflection, where do you believe emerging countries like yourselves need the most assistance? One, NSO administration. A mentor from the National Sports Commission of the country and a mentor from FIG or the Continental Union for the administration and management of the NSO would be very helpful. That way, an emerging federation will be able to capitalize on opportunities, ensure cost efficiency, fulfill all obligations to the organizations they report to, and increase cooperation within the organization and with other sports federations. Two, costs and accessibility. Getting experienced experts into the country or getting local coaches to countries with well-established gymnastics programs for upskilling and immersion and shipping resources into the country are very expensive and extremely labor intensive. Running gymnastics clubs as a business in developing countries, especially ones with limited populations, is very difficult. Reducing costs for these through grants or sponsorships would go a long way to jumpstart their federations. Three, grant applications. Project grants have been instrumental in the establishment and sustainability efforts of GFF and the National Federation continues to rely on these heavily. Assistance in searching and applying for grants would be very valuable for any developing country. Four, visibility and information. Since most people in Fiji, like other developing countries, are either unfamiliar with the sport or still have misconceptions about it, supported information and visibility campaigns with a paid federation member or paid staff dedicated specifically to these campaigns would be very worthwhile. Who do you go to or rely on to support and answer questions? For FIG or Oceania Gymnastics Union initiatives, we go to the Secretary General, President, or Technical Manager of OGU. For national sports initiatives, we approach officers of the Fiji National Sports Commission or the Fiji Association of Sport and National Olympic Committee. It is crucial for emerging NSOs to establish and maintain solid relationships with their regional unions, their own national sports governing bodies, and other established NSOs. Hello everyone, my name is Pokel Pila Pandey. I am Secretary General for Lao Gymnastic Federation. I would like to introduce Lao Gymnastic Federation. Lao Gymnastic Federation LGF was established in 2021. July and have approved from FIG membership in 2022 November. Our president, Mr. Kemasha Pilapande, 
LGF have tea club and gymnast allow 30 to 35 person. What are the three barriers or challenges you encounter or are encountering while establishing your federation? The first to create an understanding of gymnastic and gymnastic discipline is very complicated to Russian cause gymnastic is very really new. Even now people in sport industry might don't know well in gymnastic. The second our few experience and knowledge to apply FIG member. We spend two time to propose and apply FIG member to get approval. But effect to our gymnast to Russian to get gymnast license on time to participate in international competition. The third, in the beginning, to search a lead and club set up, but we have not much knowledge and we have not low model gymnast to Russian. On reflections, where do you believe emerging countries like yourself need the most assistance? The first is personal coach. We need coach. Coach is very important to the lead our children training to the correct way and safe. Gymnast. We have only one gymnast who have ability to compete in FIG international competition. To build up each gymnast should start from now on. We only have some gymnasts to have some ability, but we cannot get coach to support and develop them. Second is budget. High cost for the employee quality for coach and high expense to training and joy competition because government cannot fully support. Third is equipment. We don't have a gymnastic for, for the rhythmic gymnastic and aerobic gymnastic. And we need equipment for the rhythmic gymnastic. Who do you go to or rely on to support and answer questions? AGU or Kindness Federation who can support coach to our country or we can send our people to learn and can support training. This is gymnast, club, and facility. Thank you. Khop Jai Lai. Eugène Zavanhera, the president of Uganda Gymnastic Federation, Ferwaji in short. Ferwaji it is a uh, federation that is operational in Rwanda since 2014. 
It has been launched in January 2014, and from then it is operational. It became a member of Rwanda National Olympic Committee in 2016, and got its legal personality from Rwanda Governance Board in 2019. Ferguji is affiliated to FIG from November 2021. As of now, Ferguji has 13 operational clubs, which are its active members. These clubs are dispatched in different provinces and districts of the country. And today, we count over 320 active gymnasts, of which 110 gymnasts are females. Oh, regarding the barriers encountered while we were establishing the federation, we encountered and we're still facing three main challenges. The one is the lack of a, a technical qualified personnel who can help us in talent detection and talent development, even in organizing competitions. Today, we don't have any single qualified coach or judge. Secondly, we don't have proper equipment and uh, gymnasium. So far, we don't have proper equipment, we don't have our own gymnasium on which we can base when, while preparing or hosting our competitions. Thirdly, we have uh, very limited human and financial resources. Today, we don't have any permanent work or, or, or any permanent staff. The staff you have today, they are all volunteers, be it the technical or administrative. As of now, Fulwash doesn't benefit any financial support from the government or from the nation, Rwanda National Olympic Committee. The most assistance is needed in technical capacity building, in equipment, as well as in financial capacity. However, the technical capacity and equipment are the most valuable needs that are pressing to us. So far, we have two main sources of funds. We got funds from FIG and the UAG. We are always thankful to FIG and the UAG. And secondly, before COVID, we got little supports from the private sector, which means the business companies in Rwanda, where we had some little contracts in the companies who are honoring their uh, corporate social responsibilities. Thank you. My name is Laprice Williams. I am the Technical Director for the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Gymnastics Association. I also serve as co-owner and head coach of Dolphin Gymnastics. Dolphin Gymnastics is the only club serving two islands um, in the Grenadines. Dolphin Gymnastics was established in St. Vincent in October of 2015. The Gymnastics and the Grenadines Association was formed and also became a member of FIG in 2016. As an emerging sport, we faced many barriers, the first being educating the public on the sport of gymnastics. Because gymnastics was never established in the, in the, on the island, we made sure that we posted videos of our athletes participating in a safe manner. We made sure to inform the public about the apparatus and the facility, and that gymnastics could be done and performed in a safe manner. Our next barrier that we faced was obtaining um, equipment. Because there is no manufacturer on the island, we, had to, uh, we found it very difficult to raise funds 
to get equipment on island. The ash and the flooding that occurred with a big rainstorm after the volcano uh, greatly damaged our equipment. We were able to preserve a lot of it, but we found that the for the floor exercise, the boards underneath have rotted. Um, we are missing a lot of springs. Um, our bars, because of the sand and sea, uh, and because of the, the moisture in the air from the flooding and also from the volcanic ash, we have a lot of damage on the bars. So some areas of the uneven bars we are not able to use at this time. We also found it difficult as an emerging sport to get um, help with training staff on the island. We have had one expert come in to help us train and um, coaching staff. Uh, we've had a difficult time retaining staff uh, just because of lack of education about the sport on the island. Um, gymnastics uh, for most is not something that they intend on doing long term. So we are now relying on our athletes, our past athletes to come back to the sport and maybe give back uh, in the form of coaching. Um, and that is our hope to keep the sport going. We do need um, help from the gymnastics community, from FIG, in training staff and having staff available to train athletes that show the potential to compete in FIG or PAGU competitions. Um, another barrier that we have had is traveling on and off island or traveling off island to competition. Because of the expense, we find that $500 to $2,000 USD is needed for our athletes to travel who, um, and the athletes have very limited resources. Um, as far as um, the amount of students that we have right now, at our height, at our best, we had um, 400 to 600 students on three different islands. Right now, we currently have 100 students uh, that are participating in gymnastics. It is our hope to continue the sport. It is our hope to grow the sport and to have athletes that are viable and competitive on uh, the international level, but we do feel as an emerging sport, uh, we, we need help. We have turned to PAGU in the past for answers to questions that we had, and we hope to continue to do so in the future. Well, there you have it. We've listened to the four countries about their experiences and some of their challenges in their federations. And from what I could tell, you really need passion, commitment, and perseverance. So allow me to introduce our panel members who are joining us today. And I will start with a representative from Fiji. I welcome to you, Teresa Ali. And then from Laos, we have uh, Mr. Pokio Pila Pandev. And from Rwanda, Eugene Nzabanterura. Also from the St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we have Ms. Laprise Williams. Thank you all for joining us today. Right, I will start with you, uh, uh, Laprise. You know, many of uh, the of you who are present today have indicated how in your country, uh, gymnastics was is unknown when you started and you have had to educate people about gymnastics to attract customers. Can you tell us please, uh, Laprise, uh, what has worked for you to attract people to join gymnastics? Hello, and thank you. And thank you for having me on the call. What we have done in St. Vincent and the Grenadines to educate the public about the sport of gymnastics is we've gone to the uh, primary schools and secondary schools. We do demonstrations and we also uh, invite the kids to come and uh, take part in gymnastics classes as a school. At the end of the year, we have hosted end of the year um, competitions so the um, students get a, um, a little bit of um, gymnastics experience during their school year. They get to compete at the end of the year and their parents, teachers, staff all get to watch the competition as well. This has been instrumental in helping us uh, educate our, uh, the public on gymnastics. They are able to come to our facility and they can see that we have um, equipment on the island for a, for a small island, we have good equipment. They are able to see that we can perform the skills that we teach safely, or the students are able to perform the skills safely. Um, we also have hosted 
um, sponsored walks. Um, we try to advertise on the local radio stations and any TV streaming channels that we can to help educate the public. All right, that's interesting. I would like to hand over now to Pokio. Can you tell us how you manage the situation in Laos? So by the, it's a, in Laos means uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good night, Sen. Uh, for the, your question, uh, the first we uh, educate to the all discipline to the Lao, Lao Tian Lao people by Facebook. Because it's, uh, in Lao, it's, uh, everybody uh, use uh, Facebook. And so every day, every time. And uh, we information about the uh, FIG information and uh, YouTube uh, to the Facebook to all. And uh, now we uh, make a knowledge about the uh, low model. I have uh, one gymnast, uh, let to me gymnastic, and uh, use a uh, low model to the Facebook and inform her. And now everybody know about the gymnastic and uh, interest and more many people want to learn and want to play uh, rhythmic gymnastic. And for now it's a half a pylon, uh, one to training class, but now uh, we're not yet to the support. Thank you. La Priest, I want to come back to you. You mentioned in your presentation that um, in your country, you had a challenge to retain the coaching staff in the sport. So can you expand a little bit more about this challenge and how you're managing it? Yes, in our country, our biggest hurdle and biggest ob obstacle is retaining coaches or finding persons who are interested in coaching. We have um, decided to um, target the students that we've trained in the last uh, seven years. Some of the older students who have now graduated college in, our, in the workforce, but have the spare time to come back and contribute to the program um, and they have the knowledge because they've had a little bit of training. Uh, we've found that it's easier to hire uh, previous gymnasts that participated in the sport in St. Vincent as coaches. We also um, ask, um, are targeting some of the parents um, because they endured the sport with their athletes for the time period. They have a little bit more knowledge than um, the average person on the island since St. Vincent, uh, the gymnastics program was, was newly started uh, seven years ago in St. Vincent. And we've had some success with parents coming back to teach, but only the lower level classes. Um, when it comes to teaching higher level skills and um, trying to develop um, athletes properly, it's been very difficult to get um, coaches that are highly trained to come to the island. And I think we would need to lean on the gymnastics community a little bit more in order to get support in that area. We have had a few students who are um, just right at the cusp of breaking into, um, you know, HOPES program and FIG competitions. However, once we get to that level, we, we don't have the consistency in the coaching staff to further them. Eugene, in Rwanda, um, you said in your federation you do not have uh, any equipment or facilities. It's quite a struggle. So does this refer to the federation or does it include the clubs as well? So I'm interested to know uh, how your members currently train, whether you've got a, a structured club system. Thank you today for having me. It's a pleasure and an honor. Uh, gymnastics in Rwanda is considered as a new sport because our federation is, uh, is there just from 2014. But for sure, it is not a new sport in Rwanda because before the 1994 genocide, we had two Catholic schools where students were used to practice acrobatics. It is where I and my colleague did their studies. After the 1994 genocide, the country had to start everything from scratch. Everything was destroyed, and uh, it is 
from them that I and my colleague who had been in acrobatics just in those schools that we decided to start a federation. So it is in, nine, in 2014 that we started our federation. So going straight to your question regarding the facilities, so far as a federation, we don't have uh, our own facility that can help us to host uh, trainings or competition. When we have a competition or a training, we learn from our sister federations who have them or we hire depending on the location. Uh, the same situation applies to our clubs. So far we have 13 clubs and, and among those 13 clubs, only three have their own facilities or the two are schools and one they lend a facility. And uh, from those uh, facilities, we can, can train, we can have competition. And other clubs, they are using public places or public playgrounds for trainings. Thank you so much. Um, Teresa, in Fiji, do you have well set up clubs uh, with required equipment? Please tell us uh, how you manage it. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Um, all clubs in Fiji have limited equipment. Um, however, the clubs that run as businesses are generally better equipped than others because the owners personally invested in their own clubs and they, um, like any any other business, paying clubs at the start of count of capital investment of private owners. Some of the equipment that the Gymnastic Federation of Fiji was was given from Oceania Gymnastics Union are hired or, or given on loan to these clubs. So they use this equipment to use. As for the non-profit gymnastic groups and the ones that Gymnastic Federation of Fiji runs for squads, they benefit from grants and donations, but these are very limited in, in Fiji. To ensure that we sustain the sport, we focus on disciplines that don't require much equipment, particularly aerobic gymnastics and paco. Aerobic gymnastics only needs floor space and paco needs some obstacles. Thank you, Teresa. So Eugene, I'm coming back to you about resources. Um, you said you don't receive any government funding. You don't have paid staff and no facilities, lack of equipment. Please share us how you manage the day-to-day -day affairs with such uh, limited resources. Thank you. Uh, as, uh, as you said, we don't have uh, any governmental fund and uh, even from the National Olympic Committee. Uh, the business we learn is done by uh, ourselves, I, the president, and the board. I, the Secretary General, and the other members of the board. We are all volunteers and we arrange ourselves, depending on our, our availability, to make the business run. Uh, the government is not support, supporting us or funding us because the Minister of Sports, which is the, uh, the organ that governs sports in Rwanda, they support all. Uh, federation that have national teams in international competitions. Uh, so far, they are uh, funding 10, 10 federations, football, volleyball, basketball, uh, Olympic, uh, Paralympic sports, karate, taekwondo, and uh, cycling. When you get a, a team that goes to international competition, the government gives you that, those funds for the national team. But regarding the development or talent detection, talent development, the government is not support, uh, sponsoring those activities. So uh, the little we get, we get them from our benefactors, which means the people who love these sports, uh, some little from our clubs. And uh, before 2020, we had little contracts from the, some private companies and with the arrival of COVID-19, those contracts are no longer enforced. So far, we, are, we arrange ourselves 
to make the business run. Thank you. Teresa, coming back to you, this issue of lack of resources, how are you making it work in Fiji? Like I mentioned earlier, for private clubs, the creative use of available equipment and strong customer relationships make them work. They've also been able to privately invest their own time, money and resources to take part in in the recent Australian National Clubs Carnival, which helped them boost their reputation and build the market. With um, As for competitive and national development things, we make them work by working closely with the Oceania Gymnastics Union and the Fiji National Sports Commission. Our uh, Fiji National Sports Commission, uh, we could we apply for grants to uh, so that we can hire a SDO a, a development officer to do run these programs for us in the in the country. Since we took this direction, we've had Paco athletes represent Fiji at the FIG Paco World Championships, and this year one of our young aerobic gymnastics won the Fiji Young Female Athlete of the Year award. So participating in, national, in events like this has boosted our players, our team, our members. So looking back, would you do anything differently, Teresa? Um, I think we have the potential in the country because it's a new sport and it hasn't been uh, there hasn't been much awareness on on gymnastics in Fiji. So I think we have the potential. We need to uh, show go out in the public more more to show what we have in gymnastic, what gymnastic has to offer in Fiji. And um, attending this um, FIG, FIG uh, championship and the Australian National Clubs Carnival has really boosted our marketing for gymnastic in Fiji. Mr. Pokio, uh, what about you? How would you do things differently with uh, what you know today? But now is uh, in Laos, have a uh, Lao Circus Nation. And uh, we talk with uh, Lao Sokat Nation because it's a uh, Lao Sokat Nation have a uh, learning and training from uh, China and Russia about the circus. Yes, sir. I think it's a uh, very uh, flexible yes. and light and yes. and yes. and uh, I think it's a uh, can uh, make the. Yes. They were developed to uh, gymnastic EC. And now it's uh, our country is, uh, I think it's a uh, gymnast, gymnastic is not for the competition only. I think I have a more uh, Laosian is to join the gymnastic by uh, gymnastic for all. Because uh, last week, uh we send a staff to the training at the uh, Mongolia. It's a ATU training camping. And I I have a report and I think it's a better for the Lao people to the acknowledge about gymnastics, not for the competition only. And I uh, for the build up for the competition, I think it's uh, better for us is uh Acrobic, uh deficient because uh, I think it's uh, easy for the not uh, more time to the set up to the go to the competition. Thank you. Now, please, from your side, uh, how would you do things differently with what you know today? Um, what what I know today, I would um, change the way that we marketed gymnastics from the very beginning. Um, the intention when I first started gymnastics on the island was just to start gymnastics, get a few people interested. Um, once we decided that there was a big interest, um, I started with four students, quickly got came to 30. The next thing you know, we needed a facility. Um, we tried to do that. We got some minor equipment in. I think if I would have started to educate the, the public on gymnastics at that time, more social media presence, more advertisement, um, more events where the public could come and watch. I think that we would be better off now and the public would be much more educated on this emerging sport. Eugene, on your side, how would you do things differently? 
uh, to get to get uh, these sports run perfectly in the country, we are now struggling to get uh, qualified personnel and uh, qualified uh, coaches and judges so that we can learn the sports uh, professionally. And we are also struggling to market the sports because gymnastics is a sport that is loved throughout and it, it attracts people throughout. So we are trying to market it throughout the country so that we, people can, can use these sports as a way, a way of displaying their visibility. We are also working so hard to, to attract the government so that they can now give us funds so that we can keep the sports running. Thank you. Okay, so there you have it. We have uh, garnered some uh, insights into some practicalities of running a developing or emerging national federation. This is but the beginning of a broader discussion and conversation in sports management. In our next seminar, we will uh, be interviewing some well-established federations to hear what they have to say and what they believe it takes to uh, govern gymnastics at that level. Um, so I would like to thank our panelists for joining us in this seminar and the FIG that's working behind the scenes, the FIG Education Commission members. Thank you very much uh, for contributing to today's seminar. Goodbye for now.